Hi, I'm Andre Bagu. I am a poet, writer, and essayist from Trinidad and Tobago. And why did I want to become involved in the Colonial Countryside Project? So, um, I think many years ago, maybe five or six years ago, a call for submissions, for applications was sent out. And I immediately sort of leapt lit up when I saw this because I felt certainly I mean certainly back then um, there are very few there were very few opportunities to very directly engage with and reckon with history creatively and specifically the history of colonial colonialism and I found I thought that this was a really um, it would be a really important thing to do I did hesitate, I did pause when I considered, well, I am from Trinidad and Tobago and these, all of the properties involved in this project, these National Trust properties are worlds away from me. Um, but then, you know, when I considered the fact that colonialism, if anything, was a political construct, a political idea, uh, and it crossed geographic terrain, vast geographic terrain, I did think that, well, there was value and merit for someone who comes from a former colony um, participating in uh, a project like this. And then after I, I did apply, I was paired with Durham Park, um, a property that was owned by William Blathwaite, who had a key role in the administration of colonies um, in the British Empire. And that that felt really um, important, but also I kind of felt that my pairing with this property when that happened was just kind of serendipitous because unknown to me, I had grown up um, what, being familiar with this property because one of my favorite movies was The Remains of the Day uh, with Emma, Th Emma Thompson and Anthony Hopkins uh, and Christopher Reeve. Um, and, you know, I had this strange sort of imaginative connection to this property because the external scenes of that movie um, were shot there. So somehow I felt like, oh, this is, I'm interested in this and this is something I wanted, wanted to do. Uh, in terms of the actual process of writing, uh, the poem. How the poem came about is it began really with there's this Horatian, this Italian, this Latin um, inscription over the entryway of the property and it translates roughly into share this with me. And that that was really the, the starting point for the whole poem because I was struck by that you know, that declaration of share this with me share this entire property with all of its opulence as all of these stately homes were um, with me in the sense of share ownership yes but also share out and redistribute um, I felt that there was something uh, both sardonic on the one hand about that as well as suggestive of reconciliation and reparation so that became kind of the building block of the poem I very quickly decided I wanted the poem to be a litany, a litany of objects um, within the house, within the property, because I wanted to create a very dense sense of the sheer opulence and wealth. And I actually wanted that to even be a bit difficult to navigate for the reader. I wanted to throw everything at the reader. And part of the reason why I wanted that was I wanted that sense of difficulty in the way engaging with history is difficult but I also wanted to nest within this this entire thing I was creating um, two specific objects that are in the property two um, really disconcerting objects which uh, are um, uh, stands um, done in the guise of uh, that are meant to represent shackled slaves and um, yeah, I wanted that almost, I wanted that those objects to kind of 
be nested in all of this opulence as a kind of a repeated trauma. And I decided that I would address the entire poem to two imagined boys um, uh, because also uh, at this time, and I think this was around 2020 or thereabouts, George Floyd had happened and there was this reckoning with lingering racism um, and there was this um, you know, reckoning with incidents that involved thing, people like Trayvon Martin um, who had become children who had become victims of it so I just thought this could be a, a way almost a way of, of, of reparation of healing somehow um, and for me you know it was particularly um, I thought it would be particularly meaningful to imaginatively suggest this idea of sharing all of this property with literal ancestors um, because also you know if there was anything that colonialism was premised on it was a kind of a objectification and commodification of other bodies whether we're talking about um, slaves from Africa or indentured laborers from India who were brought to the Caribbean to Trinidad as my ancestors were um, on both sides so that is really how the process um, evolved in my mind and um, to this day I go back to this point when I do think it is willfully dense and willfully difficult but I think part of the reason for that in terms of what I was feeling intuitively is I wanted that sort of sense of difficulty and I think there's actually there's a line in here where I talk about how confronting history is different thoughts and I, I didn't want to shy away from that and so now I'm going to read an extract from my poem Litany for Two Boys at Durham Park Share this with me The entry from the east The avenue ruled with lime trees That lead to empty mist The chestnut trees The deer whose velvet antlers Harden into bone Antlers with their own tragic history Remembering injury, furling around the same pain every year. Durham, Durham, Durham. Share this with me. The way the back of the house feels like the front of the house. The way stories are told and retold. The way times will change for you too, dear boys. Share this with me. The lacquer cabinets imported from China, the glazed book presses, the Dutch Bible, the six volumes. Share them. The white Italian marble, the Flemish oak in the great hall, the black walnut staircase to the west, made of wood imported from Virginia, panels grained to match. The 32 steps to the room where you are in shackles, the two of you, two nameless phantoms, two wooden slaves, like sculptures by Louise Kimé, a white gaze falling like wine-colored light upon histories ossified. Two worlds, one of slaves, another of rulers, brought together by these vessels. Stop and share the red cedar staircase to the east, rising to the full height of the building. Treads of Virginian walnut, the pine, 
the cypress from the colonies with me. The Chinese and Indian drapes, the half a dozen closets, the map of the British Isles, the stamped leather hangings from Spain, gilded, painted and embossed with cherubs, flowers and fruit, the chimney piece, the brass locks and hinges on doors pierced and engraved with scrolling, tulips, daffodils, roses and strawberries, the painting of a peacock, peahen, crane, flamingo, pelican and fowl in a park, the manor ash trees, the strawberry trees, the seven sunflower trees, the maidenhair trees, the black mulberry, the dogwood, the katsua that smells of burnt toffee in the late afternoon, the shrubs along the paths that lead away from the house to the south where, in the far distance, the sarsen stones of Stonehenge rise, awaiting sunlight and daisies grow like minor characters in myths. Share this story of walls plastered in pale colors. Walls now being stripped to reveal their dark tones.